Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, guys, based on the time zones you all are coming from. So, guys, before we start with the session, can you all please give me a quick confirmation if you all can see my screen and hear me loud and clear as well? Perfect. Thank you for confirming, everyone. So, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself to you all first. So, my name is Neeraj Kheria, and I have been working in this IT industry for more than 13 years now. So before we get started, let me quickly introduce our Eureka Masterclass community with you all. So this community of masterclasses was started back in 2019 and since then we have been closing into more than 30,000 members so far. And in these masterclasses, we conduct multiple webinars and live events on different topics including cloud blockchain, cloud computing, on AML, on big data, and multiple front-end back-end development technologies. And the best part about these webinars are they are absolutely free of cost, so there are no charges involved here. And to be a part of this group, so you can simply click on this option which says join this group, and then we will be notified with the entire schedule that has been planned for the month so that we can join accordingly. All right, so we have gathered for our discussion on cybersecurity and coding, what exactly we need to know in both the aspects and how much of coding we need and what exactly cyber security is and the extent that we have to go into that so here we are going to discuss first of all on what exactly is cyber security the programming languages for cyber security and cyber security projects for beginners and the cryptography system we are using python so first of all if you talk about cyber security then cyber security is the practice of defending computers servers mobile devices electronic systems and whatnot by using the most effective strategies possible so that it, we can improvise the systems against any kind of unwanted and unauthorized attacks. That is main purpose of working on, on securing the networks by using multiple cybersecurity components. And here, if you talk about the programming languages for cybersecurity, then the programming languages that we have, again, that is most widely used as C and C++. Now, this is the core because this is also required to understand how the operating system works. Because understanding how operating system works, what are the, its limitations, where to use it, where not, again, how to bypass the default security parameters being defined, that is an integral part of understanding how to work our way around it, right? And that is where we have to make use of make use of C and C++. And then we have Python. So Python is one of the core programming languages because Python is, now first of all, we know it's a most widely used language in terms of data science domain, right? We have, we use Python for making sure that we are able to import all the libraries required here. And that makes the job much easier for everyone, for us to get started working onto any applications. Then we have to know about JavaScript because that, is one of the main drivers for all the web technologies, all the web APIs applications. So we have to know JavaScript. PHP is again one of the common base because we know that 40% of the websites globally they all are running on top of JavaScript. So they all are running on WordPress, and WordPress is what WordPress is based out of PHP, right? That's why in order to make sure we are having the most effective implementation part, we have to make sure that we do learn on how to work with PHP as well. And then we have SQL. SQL is the main programming language for databases. So we have to understand how to work with SQL languages as well so that we can get into the databases to get started. So first of all, if you talk about C and C++, again, we know that they are the critical low programming languages that we need to know as a cybersecurity professional because without that, we won't be able to get into OS of any kind, and that's why they are required. Python, as we had discussed, it's a high-level programming language that is increasingly becoming popular among cyber experts because of its adherence to code readability, clear and simple syntax, and more importantly, because of its library. So there are multiple libraries available here, and that help us in making sure that we are able to get the work done and that too as quickly as possible. And then we have JavaScript, which is one of the main driving technologies for any web websites or any web-based applications. And that's why it is one of the core languages that we have to be well aware of. And then we have PHP, which is basically a server-side programming languages. And again, we know all the content management systems, they are based on PHP only. And that's why it makes it much easier for us to get into this 
get into the website if we have understanding of how this thing works and then we have sql which is one of the main languages used for databases and how we can make use of it to get into any database of our choice now there are multiple other algorithms being used here that we have that we can talk about so basically if you talk about the project first before we jump into the algorithms then in terms of the projects then here we have keylogger so keylogger is basically what it's like one of the oldest practice of stealing data sets so where we install multiple keylog systems into the victim's computer so once the keylogger has been installed it has the ability to record every single key stroke made by anyone on that system even if in not any application is up and running still as soon as any key is pressed that is going to be stored and saved as a keylogger and this was much popular almost 15 years back so we had now we have multiple keyloggers available and again we can make use of these keyloggers to make sure that whatever keys are logged we can say whatever keys are pressed in the vector system we can get we can simply get the access either by working on that physical machine or we can even get the remote access for every key log being pressed every key is being pressed here we have multiple tools available like one like one tool is like we have from spyrex where we have spyrex key, free key loggers so this simply allows us to make sure that we are able to monitor every key is being pressed and it also allows us to remotely uninstall the key logger in case it has been detected so let's say once we have got what we need then we can also get the we can simply work on remotely uninstalling it and again here we can also work on screenshot we can take screenshots of multiple screens as well without users knowing we can always have the access to all the removable drives as well we also have the access to printers and all the app activity is happening within including the games and itunes right so this is something that can be referred to as a part of keylogger next after keylogger we have break a caesar cipher so this project includes the logic behind cipher technique so before we discuss on further let's understand what exactly we mean by cyber cipher technique here so we have we have something called a caesar cipher we have caesar cipher now before we even we discuss on caesar cipher let's discuss the concept of encryption because a cipher is basically used for encrypting data why exactly we need encryption why exactly we need encryption and what exactly it is let's say we have user a here we have user a and user a wants to send a file to user b so user a has a file suppose user a has a file as suppose which contains data such as xyz so this is basically a simple text file which contains xyz and a wants to send this file to user b but a is also concerned about the security of this file so a has converted now this is what this is being referred as a simple plain text this has been referred as simple plain text now since user is concerned about the security so this plain text is going to be converted into one cipher we can say an encoded message or we can say as a cipher text so here we have now this basically we have converted xyz into mno mno and suppose here this text has been converted to mno and here this message is called as an encrypted message or we can refer this as a cipher text we call this one as a cipher text or as an encrypted or encoded message now this is now since this is encoded basically a has to convert xyz will has converted to mno so there must be a logic that a has applied so that xyz became mno and that logic itself is called as a key the logic which has been used for converting this file this plain text into the encrypted or we can say cipher text it is referred as a key and then this is file that this file is going to be transferred to user b safely so user b is going to receive this encrypted or we can say cipher text right and user b to make sense out of this file user b also needs to convert it back to a plain text right so user b is also going to use the logic for converting this plain or the cipher text into the plain text file and that logic again itself is going to be the key 
So either we can use the same key, the same logic for encrypting and for decrypting the data set, or we can use different keys for encrypting and for decrypting as well, right? And why exactly we do this kind of encryption and decryption? So let's say if there is an attacker in between. So let's say this, <laughs> this there's an attacker in between. Suppose if this attacker gets the access, gets the unauthorized access to this file. So let's say even if this attacker gets the access to this file here, this is a ciphertext. This is already encrypted. That means this user, this attacker will not be able to make any sense of this file, even though it, the attacker has the access to it, right? And that's why the security of the file depends upon how strong key we have used, how strong algorithm we have used for encrypting it. And that is the main purpose of encryption to make sure that data remains secure, even though even if it is lead between uh, to any of the attackers in transit. And that's why we have Caesar cipher here. So Caesar cipher what exactly it does. So we have a simple logic. Let's understand the logic here. Let's open up our Excel workbook so we can understand it quickly. What exactly a Caesar cipher is. Okay, here we have what we refer as Caesar's cipher. So what exactly it is, for example, suppose we have something that needs to be encrypted for example we have something that needs to be secured for example here we have defined suppose let's do one thing now basically let's say here we have by default here we have same thing as suppose here we have a then we have b then we have c then we have d e F, then we have F, then G, then H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, B, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. So we know all the words are going to be made up of these letters only in English. So here we have these letters as a part of Caesar cipher. Now we want to secure something. We have to secure the entire. We can say whatever we are trying to send, whatever we are trying to send here. So what we so what exactly we do? We simply in Caesar cipher, we simply shift. We simply shift the data to multiple pointers. For example, suppose here we define ABCD. Now here we can shift. Now basically what how many places we are going to shift here that depends upon us. We want to place this algorithm on a two, uh, we can say we want to shift this on by two places or by one place that depends upon our own logic. For example, if we want to shift the alphabets as a part of two places. So here what we can do now here we can start with same thing from ABC, right? So here we can shift the entire alphabets and we can simply place it here by shifting it to two places. Now what, I, what exactly is going to happen now? As a part of securing the entire or okay, so changing the entire letter set. So here we have shifted the letters by two or shifted the letters by two here, right? So now that means shifted this by two. That means C now becomes A, D becomes B, uh, B becomes D here, C becomes E, D becomes F, and so on. That means the last two letters, that means Y and Z, they are going to come back. They are going to come back. That means they are going to be placed here. That means Y is going to become A, Z is going to, is going to become B, and so on. That means how this is how they all are going to be related now. That's how they all are going to be related. All right. And that exactly is what we do as a part of Caesar's algorithm. So we simply shift the places. We can shift this to two places or three places or five places, depending upon how exactly we can define the Caesar's algorithm, right? And that is how they are going to be placed all together. All right, that means now suppose this is the original text. We can highlight this. Suppose this if this was the original text. So we can say this is this is the original text and this is a Caesar cipher that we have used. This one here is a Caesar cipher that we have used. That means now if we want to type in the original text is original text. Suppose here we want to type in original text. So original text suppose was the original text that you want to type in was, let's say, Edureka, for example, Edureka itself. So to convert Edureka into a cipher text by using this algorithm, by using this logic, 
what would Edureka become by this logic, everyone? If you shift the letters here, so this is the ciphertext that we have created, right? So by using the same logic, what would be Edureka be converted to? So this is a normal text, and here we want to convert Edureka into the ciphertext by using these two positions. So what would be the Edureka converted to? So you can all try. There's nothing as right or wrong. So the original text is Edureka, and now we want to convert this to a ciphertext. So what would be, what would be call the cipher text as so you can say yes so this is going to be the original text and this one here is cipher text so what would be the text defined here so it's simple we simply have to relate this right so e here so as you can see here this is the original text e right so e has is going to be replaced by what by c correct e here is uh, suppose if we split this for example here we, we split this up suppose if if we have to write, to write it e d Edu re ka, right? So E here is what? E has been replaced with C, right? So E becomes C in the ciphertext. D, D becomes B. Then we have U, U becomes S, right? Then we have R, R becomes what? R becomes P. Then we have E, E becomes what? E has been replaced with C. And then we have K, K has been replaced with I. And then we have a a has been placed with y. So again, originally the text means this one, but again now we have converted this to a cipher text, having this text defined. So now it is going to be more secure than sharing the original text here. All right. And the key here is going to be what? Simply the key is going to be the shift the place the we can say shift displacement of two here that we have defined. And it's also used for packet sniffing as well. So packet sniffing is basically a practice of gathering, collecting, and logging some or all packets that pass through a computer network. And in this way, every packet or a defined subset of packets may be gathered for further analysis. And then we have the SQL vulnerability assessment. So basically, SQL injection is one of the most initial and important topics in cybersecurity to get the access to databases. Just more like a injection attack that makes it possible for hackers to execute malicious SQL statements. Thank you so much for joining guys and have a great day ahead. Take care, bye-bye.